What is there even to say about this show anymore? I mean, seriously, like, this show tonight, it, it gave us no talking points. There, there wasn't anything that happened that, you know, is overly notable. I don't know what I'm going to title this review. Probably something about how sleep-inducing the show was, or how boring it was, or I don't know what to say. I don't know. Okay, you guys tune in to hear me roast what is usually a terrible show, and don't get me wrong, tonight's show was pretty bad, but it was just lifeless. That's, that's like the only word I can use. And I mean, I've been calling these shows lifeless for the last two months, okay? When there's no crowd, the shows just suck. But this show tonight, I mean, it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, okay? Like, literally, Bruce Pritchard got the script from the past couple of weeks, just, you know, hit Command C, went to the script for this week, pressed Command V, and then that was the show. It was just the same thing, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, okay? Like, we, what, we got another Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt segment where Braun Strowman's in the ring, cutting one of his white trash redneck hick promos about, oh, get these hands, and Bray Wyatt's in the funhouse laughing. So, like... Another one of those segments, those aren't horrible, but it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. I mean, what else? The first half an hour of this show was Brian cutting a good promo, and then a 20-minute Baron Corbin versus Daniel Bryan match that ended in a disqualification, so it was pointless. And then Baron Corbin threw Bryan into a ladder, and then that was that. And then we got another, another Seamus squashing a jobber segment, and then Jeff Hardy getting a video package. It's just the same thing every week. If you, if you saw one SmackDown a month ago, you've seen all of these shows, okay? There's, there's nothing new or different about these shows. Like, there's, there's a backstage segment tonight where Sasha Banks talking to Tamina, Bailey beats up Tamina, and then Lacey Evans comes in to make the save. I feel like I've seen this for months. I feel like I've seen... It's been Bailey, Sasha, Lacey, and then you, you insert a fourth woman in. It was, it was Naomi two months ago. Now it's Tamina. It's just the, the rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It's all this show is, okay? This show is like you know, a pile of dirty dishes. It's just rinse and repeat, okay? Tonight, we also got Mandy Rose versus Carmella. Carmella won because Sonya Deville came out and interfered, okay? Fine. The, the whole Mandy, Otis, Sonya Deville... That's the best thing on this show, without, with, like, without doubt, okay? Because, the okay, I've got to address this also before I get into the review. The men's and women's Money in the Bank ladder match will be taking place at the exact same time, okay? I'm going to repeat that. The men's and the women's Money in the Bank ladder matches in WWE headquarters are taking place at the same time, which that's going to be an absolute mess. That is going to be... I. How is this company going to pull that off? Okay, maybe... I, I just don't know. It's just going to be just a demolition derby inside the headquarters of the building. I, it's going to be a train wreck. There's going to be Nia Jax running through walls. Like, remember the Big Show and Kane did in um, the hardcore match at WrestleMania 17? It's going to be Nia Jax knocking through a wall. Probably, I don't know, Lacey Evans botching and punching. So I, I just don't know. The women's money in the bank field is terrible. It really is. Okay, listen to this women's money in the bank field. Nia Jax, Dana Brooke, Carmella, Lacey Evans, hell, even Shayna Baszler, I don't even care about. Okay, and then Asuka, who's pretty good. So, four of the six women are terrible, especially Nia Jax and Dana Brooke. And Carmella's not that much better. So, that's the women's field. The men's field, off the top of my head, besides Alistair Black and Baron Corbin and Daniel Bryan, who's even in it? Is Rey, Rey Mysterio's in it. And Apollo Crews is out, so they're going to put Jinder Mahal in, because next Monday on Raw, there's a gauntlet match, which, in other words, Monday Night Raw's gauntlet match is going to be a whole hour of the show taken up by Jinder Mahal getting his money in the bank spot, okay? So, save me that crap. I don't want to see an hour-long gauntlet match on Raw, only for Jinder Mahal, the make-believe Maharaja, to win the match, okay? God, that was... God, I did well there, but... No, I don't want to see that, okay? Next week on SmackDown, doesn't look good either, it's just Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Lacey and Tamina. More rinse and repeat. Okay, so that's the basic rundown of this show. Nothing to care about. Nothing worthwhile. Nothing interesting. Okay, another rinse and repeat version of SmackDown. Bruce Pritchard. More laziness from you. Okay, so I'm just going to get through this show. I don't want to be up here very long. I really don't. I really don't. So as I said, Brian comes out. He cuts this promo about the Money in the Bank contract and how the opportunity really made his career nine years ago. He wasn't even getting booked and then he won the Money in the Bank match. Then Baron Corbin comes down. Corbin is just going on and on and on. Brian just then roasts him and says that, well, even if Corbin wins the match, he's going to probably cash in and lose because Corbin's on the floor 
of the 23 people who've won money in the bank who's cashed in unsuccessfully. So Brian caught a good promo to open. If you're going to see anything on this show, Brian's promo is probably the thing you're worth watching. So outside of Brian, this show was terrible. Then we get Daniel Bryan versus Baron Corbin. So yeah, we go to commercial. Let me get this match. Corbin's just punching Brian. We got another commercial. Corbin's headlocking Brian. Then Brian does his comeback. And then literally, I mean, what even happened? There was a DQ. Corbin got a ladder involved. And then Brian locked in a yes lock to Corbin on a ladder because submissions hurt more when they're on top of something. That made no sense. Michael Cole was selling it as though, oh, oh, the, the yes lock's on the ladder. The yes lock's on the ladder, Corey. Like, who cares? So we got that. And then... Then what? Baron Corbin had the help of Nakamura and Cesaro, and then they threw Brian off the stage into ladders. So what I'm getting out of this is that Sami Zayn is just not showing up for these shows, even though he's the Intercontinental Champion. So how about you strip Sami Zayn in the IC title because he's not showing up to TV, so why does he have the title? Okay, so get, get the title of Sami Zayn. Literally, watching how WWE book these SmackDown like mid-card matches... After how I booked it on my how like how I book um, WWE my takeover video that I released earlier, after doing that and seeing what SmackDown do, it's just god awful. So then we get Strowman coming out. I literally reviewed this like two minutes ago. I literally said this. So our white trash redneck hick Universal Champion Braun Strowman comes out. He literally says, "Get these hands," and then the Firefly Funhouse thing comes up. Bray Wyatt's talking and laughing about the black sheep and whatnot, and then Braun Strowman says, "Meet me in the ring." And get these hands. And then that was the segment. Like, it's not horrible, but we've seen this like four times. We Can you offer anything else? So then we get, literally, once again, Bruce Pritchard looking at last week's script, pressing Command C, and then going this week's script and pressing Command V with regards to Seamus squashing a jobber and then Jeff Hardy's video. So we get Seamus squashing a jobber, Jeff Hardy's part four video package. It, nothing there is worth noting. Seamus, the guy's name was like Leon Ruff or something, some Leo Rush ripoff, it was pretty pathetic, and then after that, so by that point, we're literally 45, 50 minutes in the show, by this point, I grab my remote control, okay, I'm thinking to myself, what even is there to watch besides Smackdown, and then I think, oh yeah, that's right, anything else, so I grab my remote control, press, like, you know, change channel three times, and I find myself watching the Greek news, yes, I repeat, I, I'll repeat that, the Greek news, Am I Greek? No. Can I speak Greek? No. But is that more entertaining than watching Friday Night Smackdown with Bruce Pritchard? You're damn right it is. So I was watching the Greek news for literally like 10 minutes. I couldn't understand a word they were saying, but I was having more fun than if I watched Smackdown. So from there, I tuned, I changed channel from the Greek news over to Smackdown again. It was Mandy Rose, Carmella, Money in the Bank qualifying. Carmella wins a short match because Sonya Deville cost Mandy the match. Then Sonya Deville beats up Mandy. Nothing really complained about there. Sonya and Mandy, it's the best thing on SmackDown. Literally, that's how bad the show is. It's like, Sonya and Mandy's the best storyline. Just disgraceful. So, Carmella's in Money in the Bank. Is she going to make the match better? No. Is Nia Jax probably going to botch and, you know, break her neck? Probably. So, from there, we get the New Day Forgotten Sons and a tag match. Miz and Morrison on commentary. I just don't give a damn. I really don't, okay? The Forgotten Sons were losers in NXT for years. Now they're on SmackDown, I couldn't care less. Miz and Morrison, their commentary made me change the channel again. And guess what I watched this time, guys? I watched it last week, and I watched it again this week. Judge Judy got turned on my TV. So, basically, Judge Judy, I was watching it. This one, I know you guys are very interested as to the Judge Judy episode I watched. It was another one about car insurance and, and, and like, car payments. I was, like, I was watching a car payments episode last week. This time, it was some woman and some bloke arguing about car payments. And I was, I was laughing my head off. Judge Judy is just snapping at these people. Like, the, the, the guy is talking about... Oh, well, the, 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 I, was, I was owed the car, and I was allowed to use the car, and she's just yelling at him. So it was hilarious. So I enjoyed some Judge Judy. Apparently, I checked my Twitter. The Forgotten Sons beat the New Day. So all of a sudden, the Forgotten Sons and the Lucha House Party are supposed to be credible teams because they're getting wins over these established teams. Like, I can't be bothered anymore. So then backstage, we get Dolph Ziggler with Sonya Deville. Ziggler cuts another one of these. This is my year! Promos. If you've watched any Money in the Bank build for the last 10 years where Ziggler's been involved. It's this same promo. Every year Ziggler's in Money in the Bank. Every year he says, I'll climb the ladder. Lightning strikes twice. This is my year. It's just the same Ziggler promo over and over. Then we get that Sasha Banks, Tamina, Bailey, Lacey Evans backstage segment. I ran over it before. It's the same thing as always. 
this rinse and repeat with this women's division. Then, we're told what we'll, what we'll see on Raw and SmackDown next week. It looks even worse than this week. Apparently on Raw, there'll be a last chance gauntlet match for the Money in the Bank men's, like, qualifying. So, as I said before, the make-believe Maha... Raja. Jinder, that was so bad, oh my god. Um, yeah, Jinder Mahal will win, and we'll see Jinder Mahal win Money in the Bank, so that's what I took out of that. Then on SmackDown, Lacey and Tamina vs. Bailey and Sasha, who cares? And then ba um, Bray and Braun are going to have a face-to-face, -face. okay? And then our main event was Otis vs. Dolph Ziggler, Money in the Bank qualifying. Just, is this really what you're doing for a main event? We've seen this match now, what, three times? Okay, just having the match over and over doesn't make me care anymore. The match wasn't horrible, but who really cares? Otis beat Ziggler, so Otis qualifies the Money in the Bank. So I guess that makes the men's Money in the Bank field off the top of my head. Alistair Black, Otis, Baron Corbin, Daniel Bryan, Rey Mysterio, and then there's one spot left, which would be Jinder Mahal. So out of those guys, Alistair Black needs to win. Daniel Bryan would be cool to win. And instead, they're going to have either Baron Corbin or Jinder Mahal win. So that's the Money in the Bank situation. And that's that, that's the SmackDown. I, I have nothing else to say. This show was just it was as dull as dishwater. Rinse and repeat. Who really cares? So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and sub. If you didn't see my, you know, what if the elitist takes over WWE video, check that out. But that's, I mean, that's all I've got. So like, comment, and sub. See ya.